emerged that the BJP in cashed electoral bonds worth 8,250 crore rupees from 2017 till 2024. As the opposition accuses the BJP of benefiting from poll bonds, top Modi ministers are rejecting the charge. Details of electoral bonds have opened a Pandora's box, with Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin's DMK coming under scanner. The DMK affidavit to the EC now made public after the Supreme Court verdict reveals that businessman Santiago Martin was the DMK's largest donor. In total, DMK received Rs. 656.5 crore through electoral bonds, of which 77% or 509 crore rupees came from the Lottery Kings, Future Gaming and Hotel Services. The company is the top buyer of electoral bonds according to data shared by the poll body. Out of their purchase of electoral bonds worth Rs. 1,368 crore, 37% went to MK Stalin's party. Politics has erupted over the Lottery Kings fundings, with the BJP claiming that the DMK stands exposed ahead of the crucial Lok Sabha polls. When the election commission data for DMK was released, then everybody thought, how can you get 90% from one company that which is involved in lottery and gaming? Now DMK has to come out because the same chief minister has gone against one private news magazine in Tamil Nadu for defamation where he has given it in writing to the court as an affidavit. He never took money from any of the company that is involved in gambling business or gaming business. The DMK has defended the donations. They have threatened certain people. They have uh, sent ED and income tax authorities for a raid and after getting those bonds they have stopped it. So they have pressurized people to give them money. So we have not pressurized anybody to give money. Electoral bond is an extortion racket well planned by the BJP and they <laughs> claim everybody else is corrupt. BJP is not just corrupt, they have run an extortion racket. This has never happened in independent India. Newly published data reveals that the BJP encashed electoral bonds worth 8,250 crore rupees from 2017 till 2024. During the period, the Congress received 1,951 crore rupees. The TMC comes third at 1,716 crore rupees. The BRS got 1,405 and the BJD got 1,019 crore rupees respectively. None of these parties have revealed who their donors are. The opposition has demanded a probe into the fund received by the BJP. The ruling party has rejected charges of corruption. Electoral bond is brought to the fund from the Bharatiya Rajniti. If anyone tells me that before the bond of electoral bond came, how did it come from? How did it come from? Electoral bonds Monies are going into the accounts, from account to party's account. So, kam se kam, jo party tak paunchta hai paisa, koi bhi party kyun na ho, wo white paunchta hai. From a system which was completely imperfect, was brought in, consciously brought in, saying at least one aspect of it will be cleaner. With the Supreme Court directing the SBI to disclose bond numbers as well, more controversy is likely to erupt once the donors are matched to the beneficiary parties. Bureau Report, India Today. There was a fiery face-off in the Supreme Court today. Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachu told SBI's counsel Harish Salve that the bank cannot be selective in disclosing details. The Chief Justice also hit out at the Supreme Court Bar Association president for interference in the electoral bonds case. The top court has now ordered the SBI to fully disclose bond details by the 21st of March. Here's a blow-by-blow -blow account of what went down in the top court today. <laughs> India's election season hits its peak and so does the issue of electoral fundings. 
as the SBI's data release begins to uncover political finances by a range of corporate entities from lottery to infrastructure, mining, telecom and more. The Supreme Court has instructed the bank not to pick and choose which details to disclose. The SBI has been directed to provide all information in full by March 21st, confirming there has been no withholding of information. That SBI is required to make uh, a complete disclosure of all details in its possession. Full we'll stop. This we clarify will include the this uh, we shall this we clarify would comprehend the alphanumeric alphanumeric uh, number of and the serial number, if any, of the bonds which were purchased and redeemed in order to fully effectuate the order and to obviate any controversy in the future. We direct that the chairman and managing director of SBI shall file uh, an affidavit uh, on or before 5 p.m. on Wednesday, uh, date Daldo. Could uh, we have one more day, one Thursday? Stating. Yes, third, certainly. Uh, 5 p.m. on Thursday, uh, indicating that SBI has disclosed all details of the electoral bonds which were in its possession and custody, and that no details uh, have been withheld. Uh, from disclosure. This order means that the SBI is now obligated to reveal purchase and redemption dates as well as the names of the buyers and recipients. The denomination, alphanumeric and serial numbers of the bonds must be provided to the ECI, which will then publish them promptly on its website. The bench rejected the central government's claim of misuse of the order on the electoral bond scheme on social media. We decide according to the Constitution. Correct, my Lord. We are governed by the rule of law. We are also the subject matter of comment on the social media and the press. But surely, as an institution, our shoulders are broad enough. No, no, I'm saying, I'm not, are, not for a our, second. Our court has an institutional role to play. During Monday's hearing, when advocate Matthew Nedumpara attempted to intervene, the court reprimanded him for disrupting the legal proceedings. Don't shout at me. No, no, I am very soft. You are obstructing in the process of no, 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 no. My petition for Somoto, uh, that is pending whatever lordship want to do, that do only, no. I will not disturb lordship. The court found that the president of Supreme Court Bar Association engaging in publicity-driven tactics when attempting to intervene. Apart from being a senior counsel, you are the president of the SCBA. Yeah. You know the procedure. You have written a letter to me asking me to invoke my so motor jurisdiction. Yes, yes, my lord. So locus to mention so that I should not disturb but lordship. We have... should not waste it honorable time, court, uh, court's time. Fair That's enough. why. Lord, but, uh, but only that. that. These These are, are all publicity oriented. Of of we will not permit it. Not a hat made of a, uh, whatever uh, lordship will feel better. Mr. Agarwala, please keep it that I keep it at that. I may have to say something more, which will be perhaps a little distasteful. A heated hearing in the electoral bonds case. After Supreme Court's clear and stern directions today, the State Bank of India will now have to disclose all information available with it regarding the electoral bonds, including the alphanumeric bond numbers. The Election Commission of India will then have to forthwith upload that data on its website. The SBI chairman will also have to file an affidavit before Supreme Court by March 21st, stating that no available information has been withheld. With camera person Sanjay Kumar from New Delhi, this is Srishti Ojha, India Today. Chief Justice Chandra Chud ko gussa kyu aata hai? And more importantly, will the Supreme Court's order on electoral bonds take Indian elections in the right direction or will conversely like uh, Home Minister Amit Shah and Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman said during the India Today conclave, will it lead to a regression where there's a return to black money? At least some element of election financing was being diverted through white channels. Now it all comes back to black potentially. At least that's what the government thinks. So are we heading in the right direction or could we be regressing? To talk about this, I'm joined on this broadcast by Shehzad Punawala, national spokesperson of the Bharatiya Janta Party. Mahima Singh represents the Congress today. Uh, we've got Subhash Chandra Garg, former secretary in the Finance Sec uh, Ministry and has been involved in conceiving uh, the whole scheme of electoral bonds and understands the intricacies. Anjali Bhartavaj is a well-known social activist. She's in fact been fighting against electoral bonds, thinking that things are actually far worse. 
and for an, a legal perspective, I have Desh Ratan Nigam, advocate in the Supreme Court. I want to go across to Anjali Bhardwaj first on why what happened in the Supreme Court today is important in your view because the Supreme Court said that now alphanumeric details will have to be made public by the State Bank of India. Why do you think this is a significant step in the right direction? And more importantly, on that larger question that I posed at the start of the debate, why do you think the Supreme Court's order actually takes Indian election financing in the right direction because the Home Minister argued, the Finance Minister said that this actually takes us from partly white to black again. Anjali Bhardwaj. Yes. So Rahul, since you asked your question in two parts, let me also answer in two parts. The first thing, let me say that today's hearing was very significant in the order that has come because the Supreme Court in its judgment of 15th February made it very clear that it wanted information, two sets of information from the SBI to be given to the Election Commission of India, which they had to put on the website. One was purchaser details. Who purchased the bonds? Uh, what denomination? on what date, and they said all details about these bonds. They also asked for all details to be provided about those who redeemed the bonds, the political party's name, the date and denomination, and the SBI was given a time frame, a clear time frame to do that. The SBI came back saying we can't do any matching. They said we didn't ask you to do matching. Now, when the SBI gave the data and it was put in the public domain, the Supreme Court has taken very strong objection to the fact that the SBI does not seem to have come clean in terms of putting out all the data that they had on the purchaser and the... Now, why are these alphanumeric details important? What will they reveal yes. which we don't already know? In the, reason, the reason why these are important is that once you and I know the alphanumeric, the unique numbers that are there on each electoral bond, and they are given for each bond purchased along with the name of the purchaser and for each bond redeemed along with the name of the redeeming political party, we will be able to see who has given the money to whom. Now, so you're saying everyone important. then can do their own matching? All Absolutely. rights activists... In, data in journalists can do their own matching. Scenario, in this kind of a scenario where we don't have that, it's up to anybody to claim anything and imagine who is being given the money. This will really clear the air in terms of what, who has funded which political party. No, but let's come and to I the second part. Now, let's come important. to the second part. Yes. The Home Minister says, so this is a partial step, at least a part of the financing was happening in white. What will happen now? A lot of it, which was heading towards white, which is all in bank account, legal channels, goes back to black. So how are we better off, Anjali Bhardwaj? Yes. In fact, I saw your interview uh, as well, um, Rahul, with the Home Minister. And I think we need to recognize, I have read the judgment very carefully. The Supreme Court has dealt with this question squarely. The court has looked at how? Because the government, the government council, when they came to court, this was one of their biggest uh, contentions, that we have tried to clean up the system by taking away from black money, cash, and we've moved towards this system, which is better, and therefore electoral bonds should not be declared unconstitutional. What the Supreme Court said are two things. One, the Supreme Court asked the government council that have you stopped the transactions in cash totally or not? And the answer was no, which meant that along with electoral bonds, cash could also be taken. The second thing, which I think is very important for your viewers to understand, is that we have a situation where in the electoral bond scheme, the trading of electoral bonds was prohibited, but there were no safeguards to stop trading of electoral bonds. What does that mean? I have some money in my bank, I can go and buy a bond. Nothing prohibits me, stops me, there is no safeguard to sell it to someone else for a consideration and take cash from them. 
So what has happened is that this has enabled black money to prosper in the country. This no, is but you don't know that. You're making this charge. It may have happened in some cases, no, whether it happened me, in one odd me, case or in multiple me, cases. We don't know that. So in that sense, that's an allegation Rahul. which you don't have evidence for. Yeah. So let me, let me finish, Rahul. This was something that the RBI, the then RBI governor, Urijit Patel, also wrote in a very clear communication repeatedly to the finance ministry warning of this. So when we are examining a scheme and what it can do, we have to look at the harm that is possible. No, and but yes, you're not explaining how are we better off. Okay, so there are yes, some harms uh, and pitfalls. Yes. You still aren't being so, able to explain, Anjali so Bhardwaj, how we are better court, off. The Supreme Court uh, uh, basically has weighed things, applied the proportionality test and has clearly said that whatever little gains might have been made or could potentially be made to bring things to the banking channel are all overweighed by the harm it does to our right to know as citizens. And that is why these, uh, the scheme and the electoral bonds were declared unconstitutional. Okay. Shahzad so Punawala, now Harish Salve is one of our top advocates. He's coming across looking very silly in the Supreme Court, getting constant whiplashings from the Chief Justice. That doesn't do his legal stature any good. And that's also because he's arguing a weak case. Constantly he's being pulled up. The SBI uh, seems to be hiding information, presumably at the behest of people who don't want this information to be made public. And the government's just cutting a very sorry figure. And SBI and uh, the SBI chairperson most certainly are cutting a very sorry figure because it seems as if they're trying to hide information. Why be so cagey? Once the Supreme Court has given an order, isn't it incumbent on the government and the State Bank of India to go out and comply with the audit? It almost seems as if they're trying to find some comma, full stop, some colon uh, to try and ensure that information is not made public and the Supreme Court is having to constantly go at them. It makes Harish Salve, it makes the SPI, it makes the government uh, come across is trying to hide something. Uh, I am not an image consultant for Hari Salve and I am certainly not here to answer on behalf of the Council for the SBI. So let me put on some facts that need to be put on the table and I hope you will be half as charitable as you were to Anjali ji. First of all, Anjali ji should know that little knowledge is dangerous. She has just spoken about the alphanumeric codes. Let me start by that and tell you how uninformed this debate is. You have another esteemed panelist called SC Garg on this panel. SC Garg has written a detailed article and you can confirm from him that the alphanumeric codes codes are actually not a code meant to match the bond to the donor. They only have a security feature. That means that if Rahul Kaval's company wants to buy a bond, they are not passing off a fake bond. And therefore, that was the only use. In fact, the law as it stands today does not mandate SBI, and Mr. Garg will clarify to you, to keep a record of matching the alphanumeric codes to the purchaser of the bond, the donor, and therefore this argument, let me give you another example, hypocrisy argument of theirs. In 2018, I think it was the Indian Express, but I can be subjected to correction. They had published an article saying that the government was trying to keep a track of these bonds by inserting the alphanumeric codes. Today they have done a complete 360 degree saying that the same alphanumeric codes, which they opposed in 2018, should be the ones that should okay. be used to So hold that donors. thought, Shahzad, for a moment, because SC Garg is live on the show, I'm coming back to Shahzad in just a moment. Rahul, but Rahul, let Rahul, us see Garg respond to that. Try and unravel because you were involved in the formulation, the mystery of the alphanumeric codes. Once but these alphanumeric codes are made public, can I match who bought the bond, even if the government and the SBI didn't do it? Can a data journalist or a rights activist or a RTI activist do this? Match with who that bond got to? Is it the same alphanumeric code on both sides? So, uh, Rahul, this depends upon uh, uh, the fact that the alphanumeric code, which was a security feature, not an identification number, which was not supposed to be noted anywhere. If SBI by any chance has noted this against the purchase and against the deposit, only in that case, the alphanumeric code, which can be easily supplied by the SBI to the Supreme Court now or to the Election Commission because you can read the alphanumeric code on each bond by reading that and compiling that list or you can have the list from um, the, the, the government press. So you are either. answering an ifs and buts. If I ask you to be less calibrated because you're involved, logically speaking and from what we know in the public domain, is it likely that it will be the same alphanumeric code on both sides or will the purchaser have a particular code and the bond then make some changes 
to the numeric uh, when it is given to a political party. So Rahul, it's very, I am saying very clearly, if it was noted against the purchase and the deposit, only then you can match. Otherwise, what do you match? So uh, I, I don't think SBI noted it. If they did it, it was unlawful. And therefore, in my judgment, the matching on the alphanumeric code, if supplied by the R So SBI, what makes you then, Anjali Bhardavaj, so confident that it will be the same on both sides? Because one way of doing it is as the same code, Rahul, the other Rahul, is are, when Rahul, it is deposited, it could be a different code. Rahul, it needn't necessarily be the same points. code. Anjali Bhardavaj. Yes, uh, Rahul, what came out very clearly Rahul, today you have been again. To me, I'm coming back to you, Shahzad Bhai, I'm coming back to you. I'm just also trying to shape this debate. Give me some time, I promise to be fair. Yes, Anjali. Please, please give me yes. adequate time. You are giving us so Sh much time. Anjali you are not giving me any time. Yes, I think uh, what the court has made clear repeatedly is that there is, and in fact that is something the SBI has agreed, that there is an audit trail, which means that it should be possible to match. The SBI has never disagreed that it's not possible to match these two sites and get who is funding whom. Today, the SBI has said that alphanumeric number, any other serial number that has been assigned, all the data should be put out. And if there is an audit trail and it is possible for anyone to audit then we are assuming that when we get all the data, the matching will be possible. The alphanumeric number, like Mr. Garg said, okay. if that now, is so what Shaizad, is Shahzad, what's clear is site, it might be possible now that activists like Anjali Bhardwaj no, can do the matching. It is also possible they may not be able to do the matching because it may not match on both sides, which is why the SBI needed more time. But the fact is that it's a step towards greater transparency and therefore the activists are saying, let it come, let's see what is available. Why is the government trying to hide this information then? Now, Rahul, I plead with all the dignity at my command, please let me complete my full statement and you will get all the answers you need. Nobody in SBI, as far as I have tracked the proceedings, has said we don't want to disclose these alphanumeric codes. In fact, it was their lobby which was objecting to it being put in the first place, even as a security feature, which I've explained to you in 2018. Having said that, today Anjali has made two presumptions. One presumption, which SC Garg has demolished, that by matching the alphanumeric codes, you will suddenly get that this bond is donor. Ka hai. That is a presumption on her part. Secondly, which she has been candid to admit in the starting of the debate, that right now we are only making a quid pro quo assumption ki isne ye bond tathakatit roop se kharida to ye bond isko isliye mila which means that all of this debate is right now in a fishing expedition that a bond was purchased by company because it was raided by a particular agency and then given to the particular party it is all hogwash that has been proven by Anjali because there is no concrete way of saying but there is a concrete way of saying one thing that infra gaming uh, future gaming which is the biggest donor as per the records, has given 509 crores to DMK. That Congress was providing lawyer to this company. That DMK took no, money from No, but the reason you know that is because the DMK made this that information public. That, the reason this we company, don't please, know please, Rahul, who please, paid Rahul. the BJP is because the BJP hasn't made that, that information Rahul, public. I am you make the same that. information please public, then we can patient. talk. Then it's fair on both Rahul, sides. I will, I will answer all of that. I swear to God, Rahul, I will answer, but don't keep interrupting me. Please give me those three minutes you gave me in that particular debate. I beg of you, please, I request you. Now let me make one by one point. Now having said that, and I will come to you why Congress, BJP, NCP, Shiv Sena, others have not disclosed it, and why the DMK disclosed it, I'll come to that. Please be patient. Point is that you have the likes of Supriya Shinet and the Congress party making allegations that a company was raided and then it started giving the bonds to BJP. Do you know in the case of future, in the case of future, the uh, bonds were purchased first and the raid on them took place subsequently. Secondly, they were paying money to DMK. So we were raiding them and they were paying money to DMK. Secondly, one juvenile mistake made by the Congress party. They said Yashoda Hospital in Ghaziabad got raided and then it purchased a bond. That was not the hospital. It was Yashoda Hospital in Telangana. Thirdly, Hetero for instance, the allegation made by the Congress. Hetero is a group that the Revan Reddy has accused that BRS gave them a big uh, deal on land and he, the owner of Hetero, subsequently joined the BRS and gave no, the No, but you aren't answering my question. Bond. At least so these parties have the made their information but public. That, no, I'm, I'm coming to that. Let the I'm coming to that. Make its information I'm coming to public. that. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. 
I am coming to exactly that. Now I am coming to exactly this. Let me answer this in two parts. First part is that first of all, the law as it stands today, and you can cross check this with Sassi Garg, does not mandate political parties to disclose to election commission the name of the donor of the bond. This is as the law stands, right or wrong, this is the law. Therefore, Congress, BJP, Shiv Sena, NCP, JDU, RJD, all are doing the same thing. DMK, for some reason, chose to not follow that and did it in extra transparency. But here is the catch. The catch is that majority of these parties, DMK, Congress, TMC, etc., still get their funding through unknown sources, which the likes of Anjali Bharadwaj won't tell you. And second question for Anjali Bharadwaj. Anjali ji, with great respect and I have great regard for you, just answer this question. Prior to this system, by the way, this system was upheld by Bobade ji and a bench of three judges in 2021. Okay. They gave it a green flag. Okay. Prior to this system, the cash donation could be made, just 10 seconds, Raul, just 10 seconds, I bear with me. The cash donation that could be made to anonymous through anonymous sources was 20,000, which was reduced to 2,000. Now, Anjali ji, my question to you is that 20,000 limit of anonymous donation inculcated more transparency okay. or 2,000 so limit both, of cash donation both are with perfect. an electoral both bond system, which perfect, is a white system which is better. that donor Let me put and that party both to have to S. Garg. S. Garg, do you think that the Supreme Court's judgment takes us in the right direction? I can see that Chief Justice Chandachud is very charged up. He's clearly passionate about this case. He thinks he's doing the right thing. We also saw the Home Minister and the others argue at the conclave that it actually leaves you worse off. Which one is it? So, in principle, yes, uh, it's more transparent, uh, but that is what is non-existent. Uh, the, the bond scheme doesn't exist. So, you go back to the old, old system, and what is the old system? There are two systems. Number one, you company, uh, under the Companies Act, you make donations by fully disclosing which party, how much you give, but no one uses that, or very few people uses it. The other one is the cash to route, which uh, you use to do the black money. Now, when you have to make donation today, what do you do? You would use uh, most likely the cash route. It's the, the, the donations are not going to go away. Uh, I don't think political parties would not take the money or would not require the money to, or to fight elections. And the, uh, the corporates, which need all kind of favors from the political parties, will stop taking the favor. So I think the whole system will revert back to pre-2018. To, to Mahima saying one of the very important arguments uh, being made is if some of these ED CBI raids were indeed linked to uh, you know some allegation of corruption and if the purchase of bonds was linked to the raids why would that happen through the banking channel for example if some company that's under pressure to get some ED CBI case off its back if they're trying to curry favor with a political party why would that party take the favor through an electoral bond? The argument that is being made is that this is proof of the fact that they may be trying to do this on their own without necessarily having the permission of the government whether the government, hypothetically speaking, was indeed using this as an extortion racket. Surely they are smart enough not to leave a trail. Jahind, Mahima me, uh, just... Yeah, are you hearing me? I hear Am you. I audible, Rahul? Yes, I do. Yeah. 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 So I've been hearing very patiently and I was listening to the BJP spokesperson and I wish to ask them that if. Ma'am, why so don't you answer my question? Instead of wishing to ask a question, mean, just answer my question. My question is this I if you didn't get it, I'll repeat it. If this charge that Rahul Gandhi has leveled, that the electoral bond became a tool for extortion, then why will they be doing extortion through the banking route, leaving a trail behind? That makes no sense. Respond to that charge, madam. I said, I said, I got your question. I've Great. been sitting patiently for 26 minutes, Rahul. Sure. I will not selectively participate in your debate. I have come with my wisdom and uh, my, uh, you know, contribution to your show. Allow me to make that. I've been listening here. I'm not a dummy. I will respond to the points that I've been hearing. If the BJP... Ma'am, I've asked you a question first. Respond to my question and then come wherever you want to go. You can't make your own point and not answer my question. If this was used for extortion, then how, why would anybody take money in white channels? When did I say I will not respond to your question? But have I been sitting here for nothing, listening to all the previous spokespersons? Allow me to answer, Rahul, and then I'll come to your question. I've been listening to the BJP spokesperson when Mr. Arun Jitli presented this bill on the floor of the House 
through money bill. In the contention, he said that through this route, it is the established corporates in our country that want uh, to contribute white money to the electoral discourse, to the electoral, uh, to the electoral money. But however, what we see today is small companies, which the CJI also indicated earlier, that was it an arrangement to launder money for politicians. So when you ask me the questions, a question that, uh, you know, why did they choose this route? This route was very much designed by the ruling party, which today is very evident because we don't see any established corporates on that list. We Ma'am, you aren't small answering companies. my question. Just one second. If you aren't, if you if you are not able to comprehend, I'll repeat the question once again. Just just listen, because the Congress is doing press conferences saying that the electoral bond scheme was an extortion racket, that there would be a raid, and then the company that had got raided would go and buy bonds as a quid pro quo to try and get the agency off their back. My question to you is. If that is true, and this company is now trying to do something to get the agency off their back, will they buy an electoral bond where they leave a financial trail? You know when the raid happened, you know uh, which bond was bought by which company, or would they rather try and do this in black by giving cash? Respond to this question. It's just a very simple logical question. It doesn't require any great maths here. I got your question. I got your question very well, Rahul, but the simple logic that you are not getting or many of uh, many uh, like you are not getting is that when there was a ceiling on seven on the uh, donations earlier on three years profit, you could donate only 7.5 percent of that total profit. And the books had to be maintained at both the ends, political and the company's end. Was that more transparent or was, is this more transparent when uh, you see there's the, there's a ruling party that says that they have not maintained their records? I think it is very evident that earlier there was a ceiling on the donations. Today, there is no ceiling at all. Today, uh, the companies are being actually, uh, if you see, if you corroborate, drug companies that faced GST non-compliance, months after that bought electoral bonds. Now you say, why did no, they... No, that's a good point. That's a good point. There's no going away from it. In fact, we asked the finance minister this question that loss-making companies or shell companies also seem to be buying electoral bonds. Like with CSR, it should only be a certain percentage of profits. You can't possibly be uh, buying these bonds if you aren't making any profits or you're a shell company. So those are, those are good points. But I want to go across to Desh Ratan Nigam because the opposition clearly thinks they've got an issue because one of the government's big pitches has been that there's no crony capitalism, we are a less corrupt government, or they'll claim that we are not a corrupt government at all, unlike the UPA. Now the, now the opposition thinks they've got something to hit the government at, and they're trying to make this as big an issue as is possible. Could this hurt the government politically, in your view, Deshrata Nigam? Well, Rahul, let me tell you, one thing is clear in this particular list that we have got, there are no Adanis and Ambanis. No, but where are they? If there are no Ambani's and Adani's here and other companies like those, without just naming two, and obviously they are funding elections in some way or the other, then how are they doing it? That's a big question that Aam Admi will ask. No, but uh, we don't have any, any information on that. We can't be presuming that they are funding or not. Unless no, I'm surely you aren't suggesting that they aren't funding, that they don't fund the elections. I don't want to be, you know, subjected to some defamatory suit uh, by making some comment that they are funding without any data and information. No, but this is an important question, Deshrata Nigam, because the big company, I don't want to name just two, it could be literally any big house, but any of those houses, if their names aren't there, and you've got these little lottery companies, you've got these shell companies, you've got loss-making companies buying these bonds, the Aam Admi will wonder what's going on here. How is this see, creating but, transparency? See, the only way of funding under this scheme is through buying bonds. And less, and, and cash is less than 2,000 rupees. And therefore, we had a system and we should be discussing about the consequences of this particular judgment. The consequences of this particular judgment is we have, as uh, I think most of us agree, we have gone to the prior to 2017 stage where the black money will be playing the major role. I'm not naming No, no, parties. but you aren't answering my question either, Deshrata Nikam. Look at some of the companies that have bought these bonds. Some of them are shell companies, some of them are... Uh, loss-making companies, some of them are from dubious sectors like lottery. Surely that's not okay. I mean, this is no great beacon no, of transparency. Okay. These are the companies is, that are buying the bonds. It is not okay. And this, there should be consequences for them. 
and the income tax department and the other agencies must take action. No, but that's where Anjali Bhardavaj is right, that at least these let, questions let, can be let, asked because those details have been made public. Let, if it wasn't me, transparent and if we didn't know, we wouldn't know who's buying these bonds. Let, let me answer that. When a law is framed can I answer and this? it should be decided at that point of time, how the scheme flew, the clause of secrecy was already there and under that it was donated and KYC has already been done. Income tax department and other departments will be well within their rights to take action. No, but now the because law. these questions are being asked, if these questions weren't being asked, this action wouldn't have been taken. No, no, no. You don't know because... Uh, Sir, because earlier this information where... wasn't public, so how could I, no, how no, could no. the income tax department no. ask these questions? Let now me, the likes let... of Anjali Bhardavaj can say at least the information is public. Now the income tax department need let to ask these questions. And if they don't let, ask these let, questions, let, then we can ask why is the IIT department let, not let, asking these let, questions. Let, let me answer that. You know, as a lawyer, let me tell you, audit takes place of the accounting system, balance sheets are filed with the income tax. And under the income tax, you have to disclose donation, not to whom, but those donations will have to be disclosed. And that matching, mismatching is there, then notices can be issued and probably they may, may have been issued, we don't know. Not with re relation to electoral bond specifically, but the mismatch, from where did you get the money? Those are standard... No, no, but Shahzad, this procedure. is an important question. The names of the biggest corporate houses are not on the list. Yes, Some of the companies that are on the list are lottery companies or shady companies or loss-making companies or shell companies. I mean, everybody let will me wonder where are the big corporate guys? Why are let they not on the list? Aren't they funding your parties? Uh, let me please address this because they are probably using the mechanism of electoral trusts, which were also introduced in 2013, if I'm not mistaken. And that system continues to be there. And by the way, the electoral trust had no capping. So, you know, we can say these things. Please talk to the person who knows some facts. Now, let me make another point, which is very important. Raul, don't interrupt me for 20 seconds. I just want to ask the Congress spokesperson. She made a statement that this is a system that was basically done so that the central government could legitimize Vasuli. What a great system we have devised, Rahulji, that the BJP with 30, uh, 18 state governments and 303 MPs gets about 7 8,000 crores, and those with 242 MPs and few states get 12,000 crores, and per state, BJP gets about 5 500 crores per MP we get 22 crores and the Congress party gets 800 900 crores per state TMC gets 1300 1400 crores per state DMK gets 700 crore per state itna bada vasuli master aapne dekha hai rahul ji ki humne aisa system banaya jisse per state if you see pro rata and amit shah ji explained to you that if by the same pro rata rate if the congress would have got it they would have got 15000 crores no, but same the, pro rata the fallacy rate, in your TMC argument that subhash garg can build on this is that the electoral Secondly, trusts are well known which groups have well Electoral trust, how much money is paid is already known. That's not secret. And some of these corporate groups, because we just we just don't know what they did, but some of these corporate groups now, haven't funded through trust this. either. Before you so SC, Gar, that's the point. Now, even some of these questions like why Before, are shell companies paying buying bonds? Why are loss making companies buying bonds? Uh, these are important questions, and now because this data is public, these questions can be asked. But the only thing is. That if these questions are asked, electoral bond to koini kari dega, which means that that effort towards transparency also gets negated. So it's a very, very complex question with no binary answers. It's a lot of gray. So, first thing, I, I think this is a mistake to believe that uh, the parties, uh, the borrowers could make the donations without disclosing this in their books. So all the electoral bonds were bought through the bank accounts and were, and were declared uh, in their books. So this is not a shell, this is not outside. Now with the details also becoming available, there may be cases where what they have disclosed in the books and what they have donated might be different. No, but why are loss making companies buying bonds? You can't See, run, you can't answer to your own shareholders you're buying bonds? No, Rahul, this, this is also another misconception. What a, why, why should a loss-making company be prevented from making political... Sir, you shareholder to a return on investment. Do, phir bond do. Why no. are you donating to a political party when you can't run your own uh, company Rahul, properly? You, you are in the business of doing a business. Your competitor who is making profit can do it. And if you, as a, you, you may be a loss-making, you can't do it. That puts the business into a very unfair... And only un if there is a quid pro quo, only if that bond results in some quid pro quo, would you look at it like yes, this? Otherwise, you would look at it straight as if my business is not making money, why should I be funding some political party? First, let me make business, money for my own business. Anybody who believes that the political donations through electoral bonds or otherwise were given in 
without any quid pro quo, without any political protection or benefit, I think is living in a world which uh, is not real. What happens next? Anjali Bhardwaj, I'm out of time very quickly. What do you think happens next in this saga? I think, Rahul, what should happen next is a probe investigation. I'll tell you why. Because what we are hearing right now from political parties, and we'll hear it endlessly, are allegations and counter-allegations. I think as people, as citizens, as voters, the Supreme Court has upheld our right to information. Today, the information is coming out in the public domain. What we need to go by is not just allegations and hearsay. There must be investigation. You yourself mentioned that there are several doubts that are coming up. People are inferring many things. There were companies that were loss making. Why were they making, purchasing these electoral bonds? There were companies that were getting big contracts. Why were they purchasing electoral bonds just before okay. or after? And One therefore, line. all of this can only be One ascertained. Shazad, 10 seconds, I'm out of time it's completely. Probe I have to this. play Amit Shah's uh, interview, so be very brief. 10 seconds, it's, uh, I, I understand. I have been all through this debate. I want to ask Anjali, a company loss making or otherwise giving in white is less transparent than people giving sacks full of bags to Congress party. Is that her claim? I think you're obfuscating the issue. Is that her claim? Shazadji. Uh, si baat, it's very I am not. I am exposing the likes of you. I am no, no, exposing the likes of you. No, no, but you're making it seem as if only the Congress is I'm getting doing. money and that your party is run on love and fresh air. The Congress is only the... The Congress is the disease. Congress is the disease. Who found 350 crores in the house of that one MP? Whose house was that 350 crores found in? Congress is the disease of corruption. There is no doubt in my mind. Okay, so I'm out of time on this debate. The fact is that this is, this is, this is a matter in which no one is dud ka dhula. Let there be no doubt about it. The question is that was it a step in the right direction that at least a part of it gets cleaned out? Or will we now regress for this election at least into complete black money zone where you are arguably worse off you know it's it's a very tricky situation where it remains to be seen where we end up clearly tweaks were required in the manner in which the scheme was structured uh, to make it more effective and for it to serve the purpose that was required what i want to do now i want to thank my guests for joining us you've heard different points of view what i want to do is i want to play out an excerpt from that interview that i did with union home minister Amit Shah, here he is answering questions on electoral bonds. This is the only time the Home Minister has spoken on this issue. So here are some key excerpts from the India Today Conclave interview with the Home Minister where he responds to some uh, tough questions on the electoral bonds and this allegation that there were companies that were raided and soon after the raids they went and bought these bonds. Here's what the Home Minister has to say about that. इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड्स की सूची पब्लिक हुई उसके बाद सब जगह अब चर्चा चल रही है सब अपनी गणित अर्थमेटिक मिनिस्ट्री सब लगा रहे हैं दो तीन चीज़ें निकल के आ रही हैं पहली बात तो ये कि जो टॉप तीस डोनर हैं उनमें से कम से कम आधे पे कुछ ना कुछ किस्म का सी बी आई या ई का कोई केस चल रहा है तो राहुल गांधी पी कर रहे हैं विपक्ष के नेता बोल रहे हैं वो कह रहे हैं कि ये उगाही का मेकेनिज्म हो गया कि एक तरफ से एजेंसी भेजते हैं दूसरी तरफ से बोलते हैं इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड ले लो तो फिर हम नहीं करेंगे ये जो पूरा पोलिटिकल विवाद बन रहा है इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड्स को लेकर उस पर गृहमंत्री जी आपका क्या कहना है इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड भारतीय राजनीति में से काले धन का वर्चस्व समाप्त करने के लिए लाया गया था सुप्रीम कोर्ट जो फैसला देती है वो सबको मानना होता है मैं इस पर कोई टिप्पणी करना नहीं चाहता अभी भी सुप्रीम कोर्ट में सोमवार को सुनवाई होती है उन्हें मैं सुप्रीम कोर्ट के फैसले पर कोई टिप्पणी नहीं करता मैं किसी भी मंच पर किसी भी व्यक्ति से चर्चा करने के लिए तैयार हूँ इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड ये भारतीय राजनीति में से काला धन समाप्त करने के लिए लाया गया कोई मुझे ये समझा दे कि इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड आने के पहले किस तरह से चंदा आता था तो कैश से आता था बॉन्ड में किस तरह से आता है तो अपनी कंपनी के चेक आरबीआई को देकर 
एक बॉन्ड परचेज करते हैं और देते हैं इसमें गोपनीयता का सवाल आ गया जो कैश में चंदा आता था इसका क्या हुआ किस का नाम जाहिर हुआ है मुझे बताइए तो आज तक किसी का हुआ है क्या किसी का नहीं हुआ परंतु मैं राजनीतिक चीजों को ज्यादा डिटेल में जवाब देना चाहता हूँ परसेप्शन चलाया जा रहा है कि इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड से भारतीय जनता पार्टी को बड़ा फायदा हुआ है क्योंकि भारतीय जनता पार्टी पावर में ब्ला 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 और अभी राहुल गांधी ने तो स्टेटमेंट कर दिया कि दुनिया की सबसे बड़ी उगाही का अगर कोई जरिया है तो इलेक्ट्रोल बॉन्ड है मालूम नहीं इनको कौन ये सब लिख कर देता है मैं पोजीशन आज देश की जनता के सामने स्पष्ट कर देना चाहता हूँ भारतीय जनता पार्टी को अप्रोक्सीमेटली 6000 करोड़ के बॉन्ड मिले हैं टोटल बॉन्ड 20000 करोड़ के हैं तो 14000 करोड़ के बॉन्ड कहा गए मैं बताता हूं टीएमसी को 1600 करोड़ के मिले कांग्रेस को 1400 करोड़ के मिले बीआरएस को 1200 करोड़ के मिले बीजेडी को सात करोड़ के मिले और डीएमके को छह करोड़ के मिले अब अगर तेर राज्यों में और 303 सांसद 11 करोड़ मेंबरशिप वाली पार्टी और देश के सभी यूनिट में पार्टी का योग मिला ले इन लोगों का इतना करे मानो कांग्रेस में अभी 35 सांसद है उनके 300 हो तो क्या हो एक लगाते हैं तो टीएमसी को 20000 करोड़ के बॉन्ड होते हैं बीआरएस को 40000 करोड़ के होते हैं और कांग्रेस पार्टी को 9000 करोड़ के होते हैं मैं प्रोरेटा की बात कर रहा हूं देश में हमारे 303 सांसद है हमें 6000 करोड़ के बॉन्ड मिले हैं और दो सांसद जिन पार्टियों का है इसको 14000 करोड़ के बॉन्ड निकले क्या शोर शराबा कर रहे हो भाई इस मैं दावे से कहता हूं जब हिसाब खुलेगा ये लोग आपके आपको फेस नहीं कर पाएंगे आज तक पर शो रख देना बॉन्ड के विरोध रखने वालों का कोई नहीं आएगा मेरे अलावे सर जो इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड्स में जिन कंपनियों के नाम आए हैं उनमें से कई ऐसी हैं जिन पे कोई ईडी सीबीआई का केस चल रहा है और दूसरा जो देश के सबसे बड़े औद्योगिक घराने हैं जिनको लेके इतनी पॉलिटिक्स होती रहती है उन्होंने क्या डोनेट नहीं किया किसी को उनका नाम तो कहीं है ही तो आप क्या कहते हो कि आज़ादी से अब तक वो औद्योगिक घराने ने डोनेट डोनेट ही नहीं किया है नहीं किया ही है करते तो इसका हिसाब कहाँ है मैं पूछना चाहता हूँ नाम भी नहीं आए हैं बॉन्ड के कारण आज तो नाम तो आए हैं क्या गोपनीयता की बात कर रहे हैं लोग करोड़ों रुपयों का चंदा लिया कैश में बारह लाख करोड़ के घपले घोटाले भ्रष्टाचार किए जेल में जा रहे हैं और हमसे हिसाब मांग रहे हैं हमने तो काला धन को समाप्त करने के लिए बॉन्ड लाए थे मैं आज देश की जनता के सामने आपको सवाल पूछना चाहता हूं बॉन्ड आने से पहले चुनाव का खर्चा कहां से आता था वो काला धन था या हिसाब किताब का धन था ये बॉन्ड का धन काला धन नहीं है उनकी बैलेंस शीट में रिफ्लेक्ट करता है कि हमने चुनाव के लिए बॉन्ड दिया है सिर्फ गोपनीयता इसलिए रखी गई थी वो कांग्रेस पार्टी को देंगे तो हम परेशान करेंगे ऐसा उनको डर था हमें देंगे तो जहां कांग्रेस का शासन है वो परेशान करते हैं इतना डर था बॉन्ड कितना मिला ये पार्टी के बैलेंस शीट में रिफ्लेक्ट होता है और बॉन्ड कितना दिया गया एक कंपनी के बैलेंस शीट में रिफ्लेक्ट होता है क्या गोपनीय बचा गोपनीय तो तब होता है जब अब जो व्यवस्था होगी कैश से चंदा लिया जाएगा तब सब गोपनीय होता होगा और कांग्रेस पार्टी को गोपनीयता से मतलब नहीं है जब कैश से चंदा लेते हैं तो सौ रुपया पार्टी में जमा कराते हैं और हजार रुपया अपने घर में रख लेते हैं एक कांग्रेस पार्टी ने सालों तक ये व्यवस्था चलाई है पार्टी के नाम से ग्यारह रुपया लेते हैं सौ रुपया पार्टी में जमा कराते हैं और हजार रुपया घर में रख लेते हैं बॉन्ड अगर 1100 को लेते हो तो 1100 रुपया बैंक अकाउंट में जमा होते हैं जरा उनको कोई पूछे तो आप हमें इतना पूछ रहे तो चप 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 कर कर उनको चार सवाल तो पूछो बिठाओ यहां पर आई नहीं इनवाइट किया था आई नहीं कोई बोला नहीं बट उसमें ना सर वो 
इंफॉर्मेशन ए सिमिट्री इंफॉर्मेशन ए सिमिट्री यानी कि चूंकि ये सरकारी बैंक है तो आरोप ये है कि अगर जैसे कोई सीनियर मंत्री पूछे भाई बताओ एस के चेयरमैन किसको क्या मिला तो उसकी हिम्मत होगी को ना बताए कि सरकार में जो बैठा है वो तो पता करा लेगा भाई विपक्ष को किसने दिया जिस, जिसकी जैसी मति है ऐसी उनकी दृष्टि होगी हमने कभी भी एस को नहीं पूछा है कभी नहीं पूछा कभी नहीं पूछा किसको कितना मिला क्योंकि पूछने की जरूरत ही नहीं है कांग्रेस पार्टी की बैलेंस शीट में रिफ्लेक्ट होता है कि इनका इतना बॉन्ड मिला है मेरी पार्टी के बैलेंस शीट में भी रिफ्लेक्ट होता है इतना बॉन्ड मिला है कोई पूछने की जरूरत नहीं सार्वजनिक होता है इलेक्शन कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया हमारी बैलेंस शीट पब्लिक को देखने के लिए सार्वजनिक करती है मालूम ही होता है सबको तब सोल्यूशन क्या है क्योंकि सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने तो अपना ऑर्डर दिया वो चैलेंज होगा अगर ये इलेक्शन सर पे है इसमें थोड़ी ट्रांसपेरेंसी आए पारदर्शिता आए गृह मंत्री जी कैसे हो सकता है क्या होगा अब वो तो कहीं कोई मिल जाएंगे जज ऑफ द रिकॉर्ड तो मैं पूछूंगा कि सॉल्यूशन क्या है इनके मन में कोई हो तो बताए जरा मुझे मुझे तो अभी नहीं दिख रहा है फिर से काले धन की वापसी आने का मुझे डर है कम से कम आप अभी भी ये मानते हैं कि इलेक्टोरल बॉन्ड सोल्यूशन था परफेक्ट सोल्यूशन नहीं लेकिन कम से कम सोल्यूशन था शुरुआत थी सोल्यूशन की और इसको स्क्रैप करने की जगह सुधारना चाहिए ऐसा मेरा व्यक्तिगत मत है जो कोई मायने नहीं रखता देश की हाईएस्ट कोर्ट ने जो फैसला दिया है इसका मैं सम्मान और उन्होंने कहा है कि उनकी लड़ाई शक्ति के खिलाफ है कल शिवाजी पार्क में इंडी अलायंस ने अपना घोषणा पत्र शक्ति को खत्म करने के लिए किया है मैं इस चुनौती को स्वीकार करता हूं और मैं इन शक्ति स्वरूप माताओं बहनों की रक्षा के लिए जान की बाजी लगा दूंगा एक तरफ शक्ति के विनाश के लोग करने वाले लोग हैं दूसरी तरफ शक्ति की पूजा करने वाले लोग हैं कौन शक्ति का विनाश कर सकता है और कौन शक्ति के आशीर्वाद प्राप्त कर सकता है इसका मुकाबला चार जून को हो जाएगा Make your media plans smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag dot com. You're on board the news track. A Bengaluru shopkeeper was allegedly thrashed for playing the Hanuman Chalisa during Azan. The shopkeeper has said that the assault on him was unprovoked. The BJP says the attack is the result of Congress government's appeasement politics. A shocker from Bengaluru. A shopkeeper was assaulted by a group of people in the Nagarat Pet area on Sunday. The victim alleges he was attacked for playing Hanuman Chalisa during Azan. The CCTV footage shows the shopkeeper and the suspects arguing and later getting into a fight. The victim speaking to India Today claimed he didn't know the assaulters. They told her, "I'll hit you. Why you hit me? This is not my fault." Huh. Then they're crashing me. Okay, okay. So it was totally unprovoked. Was there any other business rivalry angle or something? Nothing. 
It was purely because you were playing Hanuman Chalisa. Mukesh Kumar's father backed his son's charge. Customer came, so there was a bhajan. Now, Hanuman Ji is going to be a customer. Tell the customer that the customer was going to be a customer. Bhajan was then? Yes, it was a bhajan. 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 The BJP has targeted the Congress, claiming the Siddharamaya government has given a free hand to radicals and extremists. Even after submitting a detailed written complaint, the local police did not register an FIR. We have demanded from the local police, the DCP, that by tomorrow morning, the rest of the people, all those accused who are seen on the CCTV footage, must be arrested immediately and forthwith. The police say there is no mention of Hanuman Chalisa in the FIR and add that the suspects include both Hindus and Muslims. Three accused have been arrested in the case. Bureau Report, India Today. This is where I wrap up the news track tonight. For your time and your trust, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you at 8pm tomorrow evening. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye, good night. forecast now. Delhi, maximum 32 and minimum 15 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 28 and minimum 24 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 36 and minimum 23 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 33 and minimum 24 degrees. Chennai, maximum 30 and minimum 25 degrees. Hyderabad, maximum 36 and minimum 22 degrees. Presented by JK Puncture Guard Tire. अब हवा नहीं निकलेगी. Co-presented by Star Health Insurance, the health insurance specialist. Good evening, hello and welcome. You're with the news today. Your prime time destination news. Newsmakers talking points. It's Monday night. The big talking point is what's happened in the Supreme Court where they've taken on the State Bank of India once again. Ask the bank to disclose all, all details of electoral bonds. 
Among our newsmakers will be Kapil Sibyl, senior lawyer who was in the Supreme Court today on the electoral bonds. And we'll get parties across the board to ask them that question. Should they be voluntarily disclosing their donors? We have plenty to look forward to on the show tonight. But first, as always, it's time for the nine headlines at nine. On the show tonight, the Supreme Court reprimands the State Bank of India once again. Chief Justice says State Bank of India cannot be selective in disclosing electoral bonds data, orders full disclosure with unique bond numbers by March 21, 5 p.m. Big Shakti showdown erupts on the campaign trail. Prime Minister Modi accuses Rahul Gandhi and the opposition of insulting Hindu Shakti. Rahul says Prime Minister Modi twisting his words deliberately. Prime Minister's Mission South continues after Telangana and Karnataka. Mr Modi holds a big roadshow in Coimbatore, accuses Congress of indulging in lies and blame game. Election Commission's big bureaucratic cleanup ahead of the election. Bengal's top cop is axed, new DGP appointed. Home secretaries of Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Himachal, Jharkhand and Uttarakhand also removed. More trouble for KCR's daughter K. Kavita. ED statement alleges Kavita Aap controversy in Delhi Liquor Gate case claims Kavita paid 100 crore rupees in advance to Arvind Kejriwal and Manish Sisodia. A double ED whammy for Arvind Kejriwal. Delhi Chief Minister skips today's ED summons on alleged Jal board scam. Aap calls summon illegal and targeted. Kejriwal summoned on March 21st as well in the Liquor Gate Pro. NDA seat sharing deal in Bihar is sealed. BJP to contest on 17 seats. JDU 16. Chirag Paswan's LJP to fight on five. Remaining two seats go to Ham and RLM. After international students in Gujarat University are assaulted on Saturday for offering Namaz, state police intensifies probe. Five accused arrested so far. Victim shifted to new hostel to bolster security. BJP accuses Congress government of appeasement after Bengaluru shopkeepers allegedly thrashed for playing Hanuman Chalisa during Azan. Shopkeeper claims assault on him was unprovoked. But our top story tonight, the Supreme Court has come down heavily once again on the State Bank of India. This time over the bank not disclosing all data related to the contra controversial electoral bonds donor details. The bench led by Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachud asked the State Bank of India to also furnish the unique bond numbers by March 21st, 5 p.m., stating that the State Bank has to give all details both in terms of purchase and recipients of the bonds, warning that the bank cannot be selective in its approach. Will these details reveal connections between political parties and their donors? What really lies ahead? And why is this a major political bomb that's ticking away? It's our top story tonight. <laughs> India's election season hits its peak and so does the issue of electoral fundings. As the SBI's data release begins to uncover political finances by a range of corporate entities from lottery to infrastructure, mining, telecom and more. The Supreme Court has instructed the bank not to pick and choose which details to disclose. The SBI has been directed to provide all information in full by March 21st, confirming there has been no withholding of information. That SBI is required to make uh, a complete disclosure of all details in its possession. Full stop. This, we clarify, will include the this. Uh, we shall this we clarify would comprehend the alphanumeric alphanumeric uh, number of and the serial number, if any, of the bonds which were purchased and redeemed. In order to fully effectuate the order and to obviate any controversy in the future, we direct that the chairman and managing director of SBI shall file uh, an affidavit uh, on or before 5 p.m. on Wednesday, uh, date Daldo. Could we have one more day, one Thursday? Stating. Yes, that's certainly. Uh, 5 p.m. on Thursday, uh, indicating that SBI has disclosed 
all details of the electoral bonds which were in its possession and custody and that no details uh, have been withheld uh, from disclosure. This order means that the SBI is now obligated to reveal purchase and redemption dates as well as the names of the buyers and recipients. The denomination, alphanumeric and serial numbers of the bonds must be provided to the ECI, which will then publish them promptly on its website. The bench rejected the central government's claim of misuse of the order on the electoral bond scheme on social media. We decide according to the constitution. Correct, Malo. We are governed by the rule of law. We are also the subject matter of comment on the social media and the press. But surely, as an institution, our shoulders are broad enough. No, no, I'm saying, I'm not are, for a our, second. Our court has an institutional role to play. During Monday's hearing, when advocate Matthew Nedumpara attempted to intervene, the court reprimanded him for disrupting the legal proceedings. Don't shout at me. No, no, I'm very soft. You are obstructing in the process of administration of justice. My petition for so much of, uh, that is pending whatever lordship want to do, that do only, I will not disturb lordship. The court found that the president of Supreme Court Bar Association engaging in publicity-driven tactics when attempting to intervene. Apart from being a senior counsel, you are the president of the SCBA. Yeah. You know the procedure. You have written a letter to me asking me to invoke my SOMOTO jurisdiction. Yes, yes, my lord. No locus to mention so anything. that I should not disturb but lordship. We should said. not waste it honorable time, court, uh, court's time. Fair That's enough. why. Lord, the, 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 that. These are all publicity oriented. Of we will not permit it. Not a made of a, uh, whatever lordship will feel better. Mr. Agarwala, please keep it that I, keep it at that. I may have to say something more, which will be perhaps a little distasteful. A heated hearing in the electoral bonds case. After Supreme Court's clear and stern directions today, the State Bank of India will now have to disclose all information available with it regarding the electoral bonds, including the alphanumeric bond numbers. The Election Commission of India will then have to forthwith upload that data on its website. The SBI chairman will also have to file an affidavit before Supreme Court by March 21st stating that no available information has been withheld. With camera person Sanjay Kumar from New Delhi, this is Rishti Ojha, India Today. So fireworks in the Supreme Court. Let's see what Kapil Sibal was there in the court for the petitioners has to say. He's joining me right at the very top as one of our newsmakers tonight. Appreciate your joining us, Mr. Sibal. Uh, how do you read the Supreme Court's order today telling the State Bank of India to divulge all, I repeat, all details of electoral bonds? Do you believe the veil of secrecy that existed between donor and political party or beneficiary will now be fully exposed? Will the matching be done as a result of these details or is that left to journalists and indeed uh, perhaps activists to do? Mr. Well, Zippel. I don't know about that, but certainly the donor's name will be known. We'll also get the alphanumerical number, uh, which is the unique number of each bond, uh, both issued at the time when the purchase was made and, and with the political party. So the alphanumeric number will match, and to that extent we'll get to know that this bond went to a political party. Sir, but the reason I'm asking you this is because the suggestion is that even with this alpha numerical number, State Bank seems to suggest, or their counsel Hari Salve said, it's only for security. It's not an audit trail. The critical question, therefore, is of the audit trail involving matching donors with a political party. I repeat, sir, do you really believe that this will now happen? Or will it be up to an individual party to disclose their donors who gave them this money? You must understand, uh, uh, Rajdeep, that at the time when you purchase the bond, there's a particular bond with a particular alphanumerical number, right? Mm -hmm. That particular bond with that number will ultimately reach a political party. Yes. Right? Yes. Who would have got the bond? Yes. Right? And then encashed it, redeemed it. Right? So therefore, the party which redeemed the bond will get to know as to who, who gave the bond to him. No, Mr. Sibyl. And the party who purchased the bond, the bank knows who that party is. 
No, no, but Mr. Sibbal, the Now, in between, there may be several transactions. We're not concerned with those transactions. But we'll get to know that this particular bond of this amount was given to this particular party. No, you're, you... And this was the name of the purchaser. Mr. Sibbal, the fact is... And in is... most of those cases, the purchaser's name will actually be the donor. Right, Mr. Sibbal, but we've already got cases. political parties, and for example. Course, no, no. There are, you see, there are separate, several categories of bonds. One mm -hmm. category is you do a rate, you do a rate. One say, hold on, just mm -hmm. let me explain. You do a rate, and ED does a rate to a particular person. Mm -hmm. Within a few days or a few months of that rate, that person gives the bond. Now, there's no problem with that. Yes. Because we know who the donor is, we know when the rate took place. No issues on that. Yes. So that's not a problem. Then there are another category of, of, of bonds where the bonds are directly given to the party. There's no problem there. There may be a third category of bonds where the bond has changed hands. Now, you may not get to know then who the in-betweens were. So I think that I think it's too early for me to say uh, that we'll get all the information at once, but there's enough information to show a quid pro quo. I'm, I'm going to come, Mr. Sibal, to the quid pro quo that you're mentioning, that you believe quid pro quos will get exposed. Uh, but the fact is, Mr. Sibal, you've got, interestingly, a few parties who've already disclosed the names of their donors, for example, the DMK, but others, the major national parties, have not. Do you believe that every party's veil of secrecy, whether it's BJP, Congress, Trinamool Congress, BRS, will all be lifted as a result of what the Supreme Court has asked for? Or do you believe there is still many a slip between the cup and the lip here? Uh, see, Rajdeep, I, I am not. I mean, I possibly don't know the trail, but there will be many cases in which we know the name of the purchaser and we know the name of the donor. Mm -hmm in many of these cases, because there'll be a direct, direct transaction mm -hmm. between the person who gave the bond to the political party after an ED raid was committed, mm -hmm. or a person who directly gave the bond, for example, big companies directly gave the bond uh, to, to the political party concerned. But mm -hmm. there, may, there may be transactions where that, that trail may not be established. So, you know, I can't possibly give you a blanket answer uh, that every, every, every bond purchaser, every bond's donor will be disclosed. But by and large, we'll get enough information uh, to, to suggest that uh, this was, uh, these are proceeds of crime, and this, this, is, this, this is unfortunately perhaps the biggest scam that's happened in the history of this country. No, that's enough. You're calling it the biggest scam, possibly in independent India. You've used the word quid pro quo, but there are those who are saying that actually the electoral bond was a more effective way for corporates and individuals to donate money to a political party, it was not being done underground through cash, and that was preferable to the earlier system. How do you respond to that? No, the cash how, again. How do you interpret that? Again, cash, cash. You are asking the wrong question. This bond that is given to a political party is nothing to do with cash. Sir? Cash is used by political parties in any case. Yes. Because the maximum that any member of parliament can spend in an election is 95 lakhs. But what he spends in many states in this country and some of the states where there are mines and other things is in crores, hundreds of crores. Do you think that is done through bonds? That's precise. So that's precisely that cash the is point. In any case spent. And if you wanted to have a scheme, hold on. If you wanted. Mr. No, 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 Mr. Sibal, what I'm saying is you've used the word yes, quid you pro quo and question, scam. Please. Are you telling me, Mr. Sibal, every electoral bond that was given, or possibly many of them were in return for specific favors, when you say quid pro quo will be exposed and this is the country's biggest scam, I want clarity from you why you say that. I mean, I never make such blanket statements. Mm -hmm. I, I, I... I never make such blanket statements. It's not the right. way I function in politics. But there are certainly, in the light of what has already come on record, mm -hmm. that in the case of people who were raided, in case against people who were being raided by the ED, and within months and within days, the, they, they, they purchased bonds and gave it to the political party, and nothing happened thereafter. 
Now, if as a journalist you think that's not a quid pro quo, that's really something that you, you, you must you know, uh, uh, ask yourself that question. But from any standpoint, obviously, there is a quid pro quo there. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't say that in every case there is a quid pro quo, but the fact is that the scheme was not transparent. So if a, if a, if a businessman or an industrialist or anybody else wanted to give money to a political party, he should have done it through check. That mm -hmm. was also allowed. Mm -hmm. Why did he not do it through check? Why did he have to go and buy this bond? Naturally, because the intent of the scheme itself was to ensure that the political party in power gets enriched, which is why the BJP has got over 6,000 crores through these bonds, no, no, through this scheme, mm -hmm. which allowed for non-disclosure of the donor. M Mr. Sibbal... It's obvious. It is obvious. You, you know, it what was you to are saying the is political obvious, party. The... It is called an electoral bond. One second, let me just tell you. Mm -hmm. It is called an electoral bond, but it's nothing to do with elections. No, no, but Mr. Sibbal, the Home Minister of the country, Amit Shah, says BJP is the single largest party of the country, dominant party. It's bound to get the largest number of monies through bonds. The Finance Minister, Nirmala Sitaraman, says the fact that companies which were raided then allegedly gave this bond money is an assumption. That it's not necessary that the ED stop their inquiries against him. This is how the government is responding. How do you respond to what you're hearing from the finance minister and the home minister, sir? So then prosecute everybody. Point is, what is, what is it? I mean, I, the finance minister, I think, having been a finance minister uh, for so many years... If, if her wisdom tells us that after the raid, the money given uh, in bonds to a, to, the, to a particular party has nothing to do with a quid pro quo, I must I salute the wisdom of the finance minister. That's all that I can say, that I'm really amazed at her wisdom and something to be lauded. But uh, unfortunately, it doesn't, it, 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 it's not consistent with common sense. That's all that I can say. And as far as the home minister is concerned, mm -hmm. if, if this... As far as the Home Minister is concerned, then all these people should have given to the political party without being, without, uh, and having their names disclosed instead of saying, we'll not disclose our names, we want this bond, then we'll give this money to a political party. What prevented anybody to, to disclose their names and give the money to the Sir? political party? Nothing prevented. No, no, nothing. nothing. Anybody from doing that? They could no. have given a check. No, no, nothing. Why did they have to buy a bond? No, no, nothing prevents them, Mr. Sibbal, but that's the nub of the issue. It's all very well for us here to say that you know, corporate should or, or individual should give by check to political parties. But you know better than anyone else that people are reluctant in the past to give by check because they fear that, for example, if they give it to the opposition, the government of the day, whether at the state or center, may target them. Therefore, according to your old friend Arun Jaitley, who brought in this, anonymity was seen as a way to encourage political parties to give money which otherwise would have gone underground and been given through cash. And the fear now is that we'll go back to that bad old system where the money goes underground because the Supreme Court has not yet given us a, a, a solution. No, no, not at all. You can still give a check. You can... Sir, sir... Uh, sir, incidentally, I, I don't want to argue here. You can still give a check. If I want to give a money to a political party, and I've done so, in my capacity as a member of parliament, I've done so. And I've given a check. So, and it's, I've disclosed my name to a political party. Mm -hmm. Nothing prevents anybody from... And I've not been prosecuted. Nothing prevents anybody from doing that. The fact of the matter... The fear is, factors are preventing... Puerile about this. The fact of the matter is that every industrialist has a lot of work with the government on a daily basis. Some will have get contracts. Some will sort of, uh, you know, get favors, all kinds of favors. Uh, somebody would want his case to be closed and, and therefore you have a wonderful scheme in which you don't have to disclose your name and keep on giving money and you think that the BJP did not know that they will get the maximum money of course they knew because they are in power of the center and through the exercise of that power they can grant a lot of favors as will be demonstrated very soon because all these facts will emerge so what the so fact what is the also is this is a scheme through which the BJP wanted to enrich itself, and it did enrich itself. There's no doubt about it. And they knew that it would enrich them. And they never used any of this for elections. They did it, they did it to build their offices. One second. They invested this in their Mr. offices, in their national networks. Mr. Sibbal. They built this with, by booking, booking uh, airplanes, 
by 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 getting people from one political party to, from flying yes. to one, from one place to another mm -hmm. they did it for all this the money the money that is given to buy a b or c to to defect from a political party is not given by check it's given by cash that happens anyway sir sir i take your point but the fact also is that regional parties are also getting a la large number of monies uh, in these bonds disproportionate according to the home uh, minister when you compare it to the number of mps and mlas that they have many of the uh, parties trinamool congress brs have also got a disproportionate amount of money dmk so it's not as if it's just the bjp here isn't it you know i am not look look anybody any political party if the scheme is actually launched will take advantage of it mm -hmm. the question is not the question is what was the intent of the scheme the question is why the secrecy the question is why non disclosure the question is why not bring it out in the open and give it to the party you want to give it in then you know what your affiliation is mm -hmm. what's the secrecy about it and this is nothing to do with cash this is white money this is white money and you can i can give i can give a donation to anybody i want in a political party but the fact is that is also not an issue you can give whatever money you want but you can't get favors for it and if we are able to establish that and that's a matter of investigation then it's a very serious matter because then it's proceeds of crime then it's money laundering then the property has to be seized then but, all that that the law and uh, the law will follow okay right you know, you're saying presumably follow. that the anonymity is what is troubling you most. But may I ask you a final question, Mr. Sibyl? Do you believe that the Supreme Court, while declaring these bonds unconstitutional, while asking SBI for all details, should have also provided what's the way forward? You're into an election. How are you going to encourage corporates now to provide by check? Do you believe this will now encourage people uh, to once again take cash underground uh, because in, in India, whether we like it or not, no one wants their names disclosed that they are funding political parties. Should the court be providing an alternate system? Should there be next time when you appear in front of court, will you ask for a better system somewhere to be provided? Or are we doing out with the baby with Let the bathwater? Let me answer that. Number one, it's not the job of the court to provide any system. It's the job of the, of the, of the political establishment. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's not the remit of the court. That's not the duty of the court. So don't keep, keep the court out of it. Mm -hmm. Number two, I will tell you how it can easily be done. Let all these industrialists give them whatever they want to, do, uh, to donate. Let them give it to the election commission. Okay, so you have, say, 6,000 crores to the election commission given by all industrialists, all, all, all donors anywhere in the country. Then divide that amongst all the members of parliament mm -hmm. who are going to fight elections equally. Mm -hmm. And you have no scam. And you have donations and nobody will be prosecuted or persecuted. There are very simple ways of dealing with it. But if you want clandestinely to enrich yourself, then you float such a scheme, which is what they did. I've given you a solution, which is unacceptable. Right. Where there will be no, uh, uh, you know, nobody will be, will, be, will, be, uh, will be persecuted. Just give it to the election commission and distribute it amongst every member. And if BJP has more members, over 300 people, they'll get more money. But each member will get the same amount. Right. Right. Well, I, you know, it's and good. it won't go to the party. Okay. No, it's good that you're giving that solution because the fear, of course, is that between rent-seeking politicians and companies and individuals seeking favors, the system has been corrupted. Now, you could argue that the uh, election bonds enabled some to carry on with that corruption or legalized it in a way, or you could say that. Can we get an alternate system that will change the way campaigns are financed? But Kapil Sibyl, as someone who's been involved in this case from the beginning, for joining me tonight, thank you very much uh, for joining me and offering a solution uh, that you have. Interesting solution there from Sibyl. Take all the, the monies and give it to all the MPs openly, uh, depending on, on the strength of each party. Let's turn, though, to the other big question. Should all these parties now voluntarily disclose their donors? Remember, the DMK and 10 other parties have done it. But why are the major parties not doing it? Are they hiding something on electoral bonds? Was the bond system devised for quid pro politics, as Mr. Sibyl seemed to allege? Is there a better system out there of campaign financing? These are some of the questions I will raise. Jay Prakash Narayan is founder of Lok Satta Movement that has pushed for anti-corruption. Adil Singh Bopara is spokesperson Congress. 
Dr. Syed Zafar Islam, National Spokesperson BJP, see a former MP. I'll also be joined by Dr. SAS Hafizullah, uh, Spokesperson of the DMK, and Abhinita Mathur is Spokesperson AAP. Thank you all very much for joining us. I'm going to come to each of you and I'll ask you to keep your comments brief. Uh, first to you, Dr. Zafar Islam, the BJP, 54%. Of the, uh, of the bonds, more than 8,000 crores have gone to you since 2019, but you're not disclosing anything so far. The DMK has disclosed it. Why is the BJP not disclosing the name of the donors? Well, Rajdeep, the, the large share has to be there because we are the largest party. We have the maximum number of uh, MPs, sure. maximum number of MLAs, maximum number of a government state. And if you see most of the corporate who actually do, do political or, or give pol donation to political parties, they have certain formula to follow. And the formula is based on the number of MPs each party has. No, so and why are you not disclosing the names? Find no, no, what, Dr. Zafar Islam, given, Dr. Dr. Zafar Islam, I, 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 sure I, I take your point. Why are you not disclosing the names? If DMK can do it, why can't you? See, DMK, what DMK has done, what other party has done, is not uh, applicable to us. No, why are you we not will doing do what it? is appropriate, what is important for us, and what is, needs to be done. Why so do you think it's inappropriate? That, why do you think, sir, it's inappropriate done, to disclose names? I'm, so why do you think it's inappropriate to disclose names? I'm saying that whatever names? needs to be... We need not... I didn't say that. I said whatever is appropriate, needs to be done, will be done. No, are you telling it? me you will disclose and who has all the names? Problem in disclosing it. Will you disclose all the names of the donors? I'm asking a straight the, question. See, see the allegation which you or Mr. Kapil Sibel was pointing at us. Yes. It is absolutely untrue that it is a quid pro. There is absolutely no quid pro. Well, how is, how is there party absolutely doesn't believe no in quid pro? pro. We have actually sir, 14 demolished of the 30 this top concept donors. of one minute, sir. In, sir, one minute. 14 the of past. the top 30 donors have been raided or investigated and they seem to have given you bonds soon after those raids took place. Am I not to make two and two? Do or do char? Ya paanch? See, see, these agencies have a different role to play. That, that's independent agency. We do not interfere in their work. Okay. And the political donation is the, the politi is, a, is a company which decides based on their surplus money what they want to donate to the political party. These are two independent decisions. One is taken by the, the organization. One is taken by the, the agencies. Where, okay. are, where, are, where are we in this case? Okay. We as a political party have to accept donation and uh, not Sir. because somebody is being... Uh, uh, investigated by okay. any, any agency. Sir, but it is a that bit is unusual if 50% virtually 50%. Uh, uh, sir, I take agencies. your point. Adil Singh Bopara, you want to jump in because the Congress also. No, let, let me ask no, you. No, no, one minute, let, sir. One minute. One no, by one. Let there me, are let five guests. Each one question. will get equal Just one, time. One question. Yes. One question I'm raising to ask. You respond. Yes. You respond. This question is to you. Yes, sir. See, now how many, uh, how many MLAs are there in the country? Mm -hmm. And how many MLAs we have? Mm -hmm. Just see the number. Sure. How so you are so you're mixing the, issues. Uh, How many MPs and MLAs MP. are there is one issue. Why you don't? I have a single point today that I'm asking all political parties. Why will you not disclose the names of donors? Adil Singh Boparai to you. Why is the Congress not disclosing the name of donors? You take the moral high ground. You're attacking the BJP for quid pro quo. Please tell the country who your donors are. Well, Mr. Thardasai, that question today is OTUs. And why I say this is that once the Supreme Court has directed the SBI to disclose the alphanumeric number, mm -hmm. and once that alphanumeric number is uploaded on the EC website, that tallying can be done and the cat will be out of the bag. No, no, so that's, that's not what the one. SBI says. The SBI says the alphanumeric number which can be found through ultraviolet rays is only, according to the SBI, only a security number. It's not necessarily an audit trail. No, Mr. Sardisai, our understanding is, subject to correction, our understanding is that when once a bond is purchased, there is a distinct, unique number which is there on every bond. <laughs> now, this information, once it comes out in public domain, then the donor, which is the corporate entity, and the party to which this bond is donated, this tallying can be done. So, therefore, that is not the issue today. That issue has become academic. I do follow your point. But today, after the Supreme Court judgment, that issue has become academic. 
Number no, two, it's not ac more academic. Important. If you today gave no, Mr. Adil Singh Bhopraai, if you gave the uh, if you gave the list of donors, you can take the moral high ground. No, the question is there. There is a second dimension, Mr. Sardesai. That dimension is please look at the political environment today. Mm -hmm. You have a vindictive government which does not leave any stone unturned to alter a level playing field. Mm -hmm. In the case of the Congress Party, you have a malicious government which has frozen our bank accounts. So therefore, this question is not as simplistic as you're putting it out to be. But notwithstanding this, my understanding is that your query today has become OTOs once the Supreme Court has directed the SBI to reveal the number. Point number two, which your country, which your viewers need to know today. Please take the case of Future Gaming, the Lottery King. Mm -hmm. He is raided by the Enforcement Directorate on the 2nd of April 2022. Second of April 2022. Mm -hmm. Five days later, the same company which is raided by the ED donates 100 crores to the BJP. The same company is raided by the Income Tax Department in October 2023. And within 30 days, you have this company donating 65 crore rupees of money to the Bharatiya Janata Party. This, to my understanding, is a classic case of legalized extortion. Please see the chronology. You have a government which uses the threat of investigating agencies to put pressure on entities. In pursuance of that threat, you have that corporate entity donating money to the Bharatiya Janata Party. And as a corollary, mm -hmm. those cases disappear in thin air. I think this needs to be understood by the people of this country. Okay. This is legalized plunder by the Bharatiya Janata Party. You, you've this reflected is arguably the, the biggest Sir, scam Mr. Bhopraj, Mr. Bhopraj, you've raised the chronology in the case of Future Gaming, which is the highest donor with more than 1,300 crores. But I want to come to my DMK guest at that moment, therefore. Uh, because uh, uh, Dr. SSA, SAS Hafizullah, the fact is, it has now been revealed through your DMK list that 37%, 37% of this 1300 1300 crore plus that was given by Future Gaming came to you, came to the DMK. They are a Chennai-based lottery company. They've given it to you. They've not just given it to the BJP. So why should the BJP only uh, uh, claim the? Why should you only claim the BJP is doing quid pro quo? You also had a deal with this gaming company. No, I mean, the, the quid pro quo is that we should have done something in favor for the company who has donated. Mm -hmm. See, in this case, it is a classical uh, case which has multiple components of quid pro quo, kickbacks, money laundering and extortion. See, as far as uh, the future gaming is concerned, we have not done any favor for that company because lottery is banned in Tamil Nadu. When the online Rami issue came, it is our government which went against this party, I mean, which uh, against this rule. In fact, governor was the governor which was sent by the BJP was favoring online gaming. So the quid pro quo here is not established. No, the Donation quid pro quo is, is apparently that, that members of the Santiago Martin clear, family had links both with the BJP and DMK. That's the accusation. No, no, no. No, no. It, it, see, merely having a link does not mean anything unless and until a favor is done in return. And to establish this fact, before we came to power in 2021, we had funds of around 210 crores. When we were in opposition itself, we had 210 crores. And now it is six, 600 crores in another three years. So what we are saying is, an, is there is no establishment of quid pro quo or there is no establishment of extortion here. Are that you is open what for any investigation into future gaming and its alleged and links with the DMK? Are you open for any investigation? Definitely, definitely see ED is with them. ED is with them. I'll give an example. A mere allegation of 1.8 crores. A minister is lying in the jail for a case filed in a filed by the ed what is happening with money sisodia when ed has all that power let them go behind mega engineering let them go behind uh, uh, future gaming or whosoever who have funded to any political party that is irrespective okay. of what dmk wants to say okay. but here it is a case this government always talks about transparency where is transparency sbi is trying to shield this government shield the bjp by giving no, very simple reason. And what is BJP saying? Your Prime Minister and going is going and talking about digital India and success of digital India. When when the court is asking you to submit documents, BJP comes up and says, we don't have a document. 
when your prime minister is claiming about uh, success of digital India, where BJP doesn't have anything in digital, okay. SBA you, doesn't have anything in digital. Okay, you so made you your point, there doctor. Is a of digital India? Doctor Hafizullah, so you made your point. I'm glad at least that the DMK has come voluntarily disclosed name, but. Uh, Abhinandita Mathur, spokesperson, Aap, Aap Aadmi Party has done partial disclosure. You've disclosed what you got before 2019, but not after. You claim to be a party that st stands up against corruption. Just disclose the names. Certainly, Rajdeep, we will. And I am happy that you mentioned that we did actually, we are one of the only parties who has declared our uh, electoral bond uh, incoming for, uh, before 2019. And certainly we will. No, no, certainly we will, we, which, we, you know, what are you waiting for? You see, if some parties can do it, why can't you? We will, our teams are looking into it. Look, that, the court itself has given a now time till tomorrow. Right. If I'm not mistaken. Till, for till all Thursday, the till Thursday to State Bank. But are you giving us a commitment that Aam Aadmi Party will disclose all the details? Absolutely, Aam Aadmi Party will. Okay, that's, that's reassuring. You know, Jay Prakash Narayan, you're listening to the politicians. As I said, in general, what electoral bond seems to be slowly exposing is how rent-seeking politicians operate with those who are dependent on government largesse, infrastructure companies, even some drug uh, uh, companies. And the fact is that they are coming together, gaming companies, because electoral bonds provided them uh, a, a secrecy. Rajdeep, um, let me make a broad statement. Even though many politicians are individually honest, without institutional corruption, honesty and survival are not compatible in India right now. Let's face facts. Grandstanding will do no good. I was the one instrumental in persuading the political parties after the Tehelka scam to bring in a law giving the donors 100% tax exemption. Perhaps India is the only major country where such a system is available. What happened is, BJP apparently, Mr. Arun Jaitley told me several times subsequently, BJP took a decision not to take any money by cash because the donor has tax exemption, there's no point collecting by cash, we'll only ask for check. Despite their being in power, within three months, the receipts fell by 80 to 90%. Mm -hmm. It is that experience that I think informed Mr. Arun Jaitley when he became finance minister later. And therefore, he thought of a lawyerly solution, not a democratic, transparent solution, but he wanted a solution where the donor gets tax exemption, the party gets by uh, not a cash, but accounted money and spend it in an accountable manner. This is how we landed in this mess. But see the, the situation before the electoral bonds. I have some numbers here, 2004 to 2011, in those eight years, the major parties, only 8% came from disclosed sources. 8.9%. Mm -hmm. Indian National Congress, only 8%. BJP, only 17%. Mm -hmm. BSP, 0%. Mm -hmm. Nationalist Congress Party, 6%. CPM, 1%. So we are not looking at a perfect world and a bad world. We are looking at an imperfect world. So within that, we have to figure out a solution. We definitely require transparency. Nobody in a democracy can argue against transparency. We need to know where the funds are coming from, how they are deployed. We also require a situation where cash is not the primary source of funding political parties, unaccounted and illegitimate. So we are pretending as if there is no cash economy. The total money you're talking about in electoral bonds in the last 14, 15 bonds or checks, mm -hmm. it's only about 5% or less than 5% of the total political expenditure in India. I come from a state of uh, Telangana. I know intimately Andhra Pradesh. I am sure many of us know what's happening in Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. Let us not pretend that this is the money that is being spent. A single state in, a, in an assembly election is spending 10 to 12,000 crores in some of the major states. So the real challenge is much bigger. We are now using a red herring instead of addressing the problem and finding a solution. There are two central issues we have to tackle. One is can you create an electoral system where this money distribution and vast expenditure, hundreds of crores of rupees per Lok Sabha in some cases, tens of crores of rupees per assembly constituency per candidate, that we can give that up and have a decent electoral country. It will take a lot of doing. Mr. Vajpayee as Prime Minister used to say every day, we are lying through, through the teeth. 
We're telling the people that we spent only within the ceiling limits. The first affidavit we're filing itself is a lie. No, no, give me a solution. Give me a solution, Jai Prakash Narayan. I think everyone knows the problem that electoral bonds were only a fraction of what political parties spend during elections. What's the solution? Kapil Sibal said, there are, there are once you solutions. collect through the bonds, give it to each MP in a fixed proportion. Does that work? It's a bad idea because this money is meant for the political parties functioning. It's not about election finance. And therefore, mm -hmm. giving money to MPs is meaningless. This is not about electoral contest. Parties need money. Politics is a noble endeavor. How can you run a party? How can you run a campaign? How can you do research? How can you do campaign? How can you publicize? How can you have public meetings without resources available, legitimately collected, legitimately spent? This is not about election expenditure alone. Election expenditure is where most of the cash is deployed. Sir, so that's a bad solution. That's sir, a but the worry is the worry is that if you start encouraging, incentivizing people to give by check, how do you incentivize them? Because when they the fear is that the moment you do it through check, if you give it to the opposition, the government will go after you. That's the fear. This that's the difference between us and the United States, for example. I entirely agree. We have weaponized the enforcement agencies. Therefore, there are three approaches we have to look at all together. One. Can we, for the parties functioning, not electoral purpose, can the parties functioning give money from the public exchequer in proportion to the votes they get? Germany has that system. Many countries have that system. Per vote, they get in the last election, they get X amount of money. That should be enough for the party's survival. As far as the elections are concerned, election expenditure, that's the real expenditure in the country. Probably in an election cycle in India, we are spending 100,000 crores. I am saying with all sense of responsibility. In Andhra Pradesh, where election is due now, assembly election, right? anybody who knows politics of Andhra Pradesh knows roughly about 10,000 crores is going to be spent in that state. Telangana, where we had elections a few months ago, we spent about eight to 9,000 crores in Telangana. Everybody knows that we're pretending it doesn't exist. No, that cannot be addressed by all these things. One, we have to create a framework in which you don't have to buy vote. You must change the electoral system. In the first past the post system, where the marginal vote is all important, in many states, what's your second, second? What's your second? Pro the second one is, can we create a political economy where the political executive or the party in power cannot determine the economic fortunes of enterprises and individuals? Right now, there's no real rule of law. Number no three, is there, but in reality, it's, there. it's not there. It will not happen overnight. Okay. We have to now start doing that. Without doing these two things, pretending that there is some angel or some demon. Pretending it's a battle between good and evil is a romantic notion. I take it's a your, surreal debate. I, I take your point, and that's why I'm glad you're there, because you are not connected with any, any of these parties. But, you know, Sayyid Zafar Islam, the BJP has to take the lead. And the fear, I'll tell you what, where the opposition parties are coming in. They think you have weaponized agencies. The manner, according to them, that enforcement directed in particular is used, 95% of the cases are against opposition politicians. That leads to fear. It leads to fear among corporates, among individuals. If there is a check system, will be targeted. So you gave it through electoral bonds, through secrecy, and managed to avoid, uh, in, in a way, being raided. The fact is, I repeat, Mr. Dr. Zafar Islam, 14 of the 30 top donors are companies being investigated. What does that suggest? Uh, Radeep, you are repeating the same thing time and again. It doesn't suggest anything. As I said earlier, these are two independent uh, uh, agencies. The agencies pursuing their own objective based on evidence what they have. No, uh, uh, whether ED or CBI or income tax cannot raid you unless they have some leads. Yes, but then when they give donations straight basis, after Adil Singh Bopara has pointed out a chronology yeah. which is very troubling. You raid a company, <coughs> 10 days later the company gives you 60 crores? No, no, crores? I think they, they should come, they, first they should come out and, no, first they should come out and explain this party which has just 53 MP, MPs or 52 MPs, how did they get 1900 crore? They have no, they have government in one or two states. Yes. And then you, you should ask the TMC, how come they have got 1700 crore? Bharti Janta Party having more than 50% of the MLAs and more than 50% of MPs. Adil Singh Bopara respond have, to this. Got maximum okay, uh, Adil Singh Bopara respond it, to what Zafar Islam is saying. Zafar it, Islam it, is it saying. Uh, Zafar say Islam that, is yes, saying the party the which is dominant of, is, is will naturally get the most money. What about parties like yours, TMC, and other smaller parties? Mr. Sardesai, uh, the BJP is deliberately skirting the issue. 
The most significant bane of this scheme was that it violated the voters' right to information. This is one part of it. And on this principle, the Supreme Court struck it down. But please see the part which is dangerous for the electoral system and for the democracy of this country, which is when the ruling party uses agencies to extort money. I have given you the example of Santiago Martin. Within five days of his raid, he makes a donation of 100 crore rupees and that case has disappeared into thin air. Point number one. Mm -hmm. Point number two, you have the BJP's washing machine. There are leaders from the opposition who join the BJP. I am curious to know what's going to happen about the cases as far as Mr. Ashok Chavan is concerned. What happened to the cases against uh, Mr. Ajit Pawar? What happened to the cases against Mukul Roy? What Raja, happened to the cases against Shiv Sena leader? So therefore, the BJP is using agencies to extort money. This is one part. The second part is in the case of mega infrastructure. What the BJP has done is that it has used the route of electoral bonds to give contracts to corporate entities. The third dimension is that corporate entities, which are essentially shell companies with very meager incomes and profits, are donating money almost 15 or 20 times their capacity. So okay. therefore, the answer is these are these are companies or shell companies which are routing money for other corporate entities. This is a very murky system. Which no, is this is a murky system, but as Jay Prakash Narayan mentioned, uh, the real ask, it is also I... that remember the real money can... still comes through cash. Abhinandita, you wanted to make a point support. very quickly, ma'am. Very quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. I'm actually appalled at uh, the arrogance of the BJP spokesperson today i think that you know the way in which he said that there are so many and uh, mlas and mps in fact more than thousands of mlas and mps have been bought by them so what are they talking about and you know that is where the money is perhaps being used but more importantly you know the, it is a matter of fact now that the bjp is actually no more a party it's a company and that is how it is functioning the kind of wealth that the bjp has accumulated and this is what we know as of now we god knows how much more they have and, you know, slowly as the skeletons will okay. come out, which I, is I, a really, I, you really know, you all are all attacking look. Sayyid Zafar Islam, so he deserves a final word. Dr. Zafar Islam, come clean today. You said you're a party with a difference. A party with a difference should set Ra the standards. Ra Prime Ra Minister Ra says, Khaunga, na Ra Ra dunga. You, must set the, you must set the standards. They brought in the they brought in the the scheme, you know. Ma'am, exactly. they, they brought in the scheme. Let him we, respond. We, let him respond. No, Final no, no. Word. Let, let, let me let let me let me respond to that question. Yes. Rajdeep, it, we have brought transparency. They used to collect cash, like uh, Congress MP Sahu, who had recently ID raided and they got 550 crore cash with him. I mean, this kind of money they want to keep. We, have, we were able to bring transparency. If it's not a perfect system, we can improve it further, based on the suggestion made by others. But let me ask you one question mm -hmm. and pose this question to everyone. How come one uh, BRS in one state, Thousand crore, mm -hmm. well, how they, they were extorting money, uh, if they were get extorting, and if uh, TMC, one state, 1700 crore, we are in 17 states, we are in this government, central government, we have merely 8000 crore, just just extrapolate it. Okay. We should have been getting 20,000 crore or more than that. Yeah, yeah but we, we didn't do that, that we, because. These are two, two independent so works. So whether you got two, you whether you got six thousand no, or twenty thousand really crores, to... if it involves quid pro quos, it is prima facie corruption Tendency. in some form. Let's Absolutely not. not. This is what I'm saying. Dilute that. It, you should ask. The these... proof has to be in quid pro quos. If we can prove quid pro quos, and that's what I'm going to continue to focus on in the next few days. Yes, Mr. Afizullah, final word, thirty seconds. No, the BJP has never promise that they are going to reveal the details. Bringing out the details of their donors is going to expose their corruption tooth and nail. BJP is a party, is the most corrupt party in the Indian history, which has legitimized corruption. Just because you receive a money from a banking channel doesn't make it white. Okay. There are money laundering we cases here. This is going to come out. If there we'll is going wait. to be a Supreme Court monitored investigation okay, into Mr. the source of funding. Dr. Afisullah, I have run completely out of time. I appreciate all my guests joining us. As I said, it is uh, dal mein kuch kala hai ya puri dal kali hai when it comes to the way campaign financing takes place in this country is going to continue to rock this show at least 
as we head into elections. I don't know about other channels that don't seem to want to discuss the real issues of our times. Let's take a break. When we come back, our Get Real India story, that shocking assault on foreign students in Gujarat University. We'll tell you why this is uh, an incident that deserves the strictest action. Back in a moment, you're watching the news today. News that tells you the real stories. Weather forecast now. Delhi, maximum 32 and minimum 15 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 28 and minimum 24 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 36 and minimum 23 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 33 and minimum 24 degrees. Chennai, maximum 30 and minimum 25 degrees. Hyderabad, maximum